This is Josh Mandel with a, a quick demo of a little plugin that I've been working on for ChatGPT4. This is designed as kind of the simplest possible thing that might help ChatGPT to write better fire resources when it's representing clinical data. Uh, if you've played with ChatGPT, uh, especially GPT-4, you'll know it's pretty good about creating fire data from unstructured information, but it's also has a tendency to make certain kinds of mistakes, either populating property names that aren't quite right or picking coded vocabulary terms that um, aren't correct either. And so I've been playing with a snippet of one of my own clinical notes just to try to create fire resources from this. Uh, and I've already tried generating a fire resource for blood pressure med uh, earlier, uh, but I'm gonna do something new and we'll see if it fails in interesting or spectacular ways or just kind of what happens here. So I'm gonna use this pasted in note and just sort of looking through the results here, there's these lab orders uh, for baseline lights and renal function, uh, which is you know pretty decent clinical jargon here. Uh, so let's see if I can just have it create um, medication or, or rather a service request for those lab orders. And if everything goes according to plan, ChatGPT is going to notice that it has a plugin available. Uh, and it does this by reading a file called AIPlugin.json. And the model itself reads a description like this, description for model. It's a plugin to assist with Fire API development. You can refine example Fire resources to make them valid. So I'm hoping the model is going to read this description and notice that this plugin is available. And in fact, that is what has happened. So it's decided to use my Fire API helper plugin. So we're off to a good start. Um, and what it's going to send into the plugin is a description of what it's trying to do with FHIR, which is a lab order for a basic metabolic panel to check baseline lights and renal functions. Okay, and it's also going to send a draft resource, and it has correctly chosen to use a service request here, and it's chosen uh, this LOINC code for a basic metabolic panel. Let's just do a quick spot check here, see if that is the right um, LOINC code, and actually it is. Uh, so it's done a good job of picking the right LOINC code, and it frequently will for cases that are uh, pretty common for link codes that are presumably well represented in the training data set. Um, so it's actually done a pretty good job with this. I can't immediately detect any issues right off the bat here, um, but let's see if the plugin gives it any useful information. So the plugin responds with some instructions. Uh, this is my little TypeScript program that has evaluated the resource with the standard fire validator. Uh, and it responds and says, Take a look at my output, incorporate any vocabulary items into your coding as needed, and fix any validation errors. And then it returns a sort of refined output here. Um, and then it has looked up in LOINC a set of relevant terms, just in case any of these turns out to be uh, a better choice for the vocabulary. So it's giving these relevant um, LOINC terms to the GPT-4 plugin environment. And now the plugin environment reads that response. Um, and so sort of the end user perspective normally would be all oh, of this is just hidden and the model calls that plugin, uses the output, and then says here's the fire representation of a lab order for a basic metabolic panel for Joshua. Um, in this case, it's decided to use this same one code. I think it's stuck with it. This is the very same one that it started with. Yep, uh, comprehensive. But, but if, actually, if you look at what happened, initially when it created this order, it called it basic metabolic panel, because that was sort of its clinical intent. Um, my plugin actually stripped away this code, searched for LOINC codes using this display, and then returned the list of them here. And what the model was able to do at that point was to, to pull out the official or correct LOINC code from this vocabulary search, and it was able to incorporate that here in the output. Um, so that's one place where the output has been improved a little bit. Didn't change the code, but did improve the display. Um, and otherwise, it looks like it was actually a pretty good input to start. Refined slightly here. So that's a quick demo of how a GPT plugin can refine this kind of fire um, draft resource. And I guess the quick sort of tour through the code would be to say, the Fire Open AI plugin repository in my GitHub org. If 
Higher Examples AI plugin. Um, there's not a ton happening here. It's a couple hundred lines of uh, not yet very well uh, documented or organized TypeScript code. Um, but the relevant thing is this little handler here. This is what receives a request from ChatGPT. It looks through the JSON body of the original resource and it pulls out all the codings and it actually deletes them from the original resource so as not to confuse the validator. So it just removes all those coded terms and then looks them up in um, my vocabulary search tool. And then it passes the data into this refine function, which just iteratively calls the fire validator. Um, it by default will make up to three attempts. So it calls the fire validator and then it takes any errors that the validator found and it passes them into a new conversation with, in this case, GPT 3.5. I'd love to be using GPT 4 at this point, but I don't have easy API access to it. Um, and so I create this little conversation and I ask GPT 3.5 to improve the JSON based on the validator response by calling the create chat completions API. Um, and then if we don't have any more errors or if we haven't made any significant changes or improvements, we just return the result. Um, and all that together gets us to this hidden response here that GPT-4 is able to take and use in the context of its final uh, generation, which hopefully here should be a valid fire resource. Um, I think there's a publicly hosted version of the fire validator. Yeah, this is where it lives. Um, I haven't used this recently, but in theory, I could just sort of paste this in. And of course, you would not want to do this with real PHI, but I'm personally comfortable enough sharing my information in this context. Um, not a choice that, that most people would necessarily want to make. And in this case, um, I seem to have gotten some validation results, zero. Uh, I think that means maybe there's no problems, or maybe it means it's not working. It's not um, actually a super helpful output here, uh, but maybe we'll do a follow-up session there. Um, but I think in this case, what it means is there were no fatal errors, no er errors, no warnings, uh, and no information. So that's a quick tour. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be able to stitch these parts together, uh, but really all the interesting stuff is happening um, in the model. If you can just give it the right augmented data set with which to generate a response, it can stitch those pieces together. Uh, it does a pretty good job even without any information, and then with this information in context, um, it really is able to tie things up. So that's it for now. See you next time.